tales for dark nights. It happened when I was five. I was running around a playground, enjoying the summer like most little kids my age. I would chase my friends around the swing set, and then we'd all pile onto the slide, trying to make it to the bottom together. Our mothers watched from the benches, chatting with each other and keeping a watchful eye on our activity. I remember we were playing tag when I heard the dog barking. I stopped and wiped sweat from my forehead, gasping in air, hands on my grass-stained knees. Behind the playground was a patch of forest, an undeveloped plot of land. There was a dog biting at something, just inside the tree line. I could hear the cries of pain from whatever the mutt was attacking. I had a soft spot for animals, and so I quickly bolted over and swatted the dog on the nose, scolding it and telling it to shoo. It was foolish of me, and I was lucky the dog didn't attack me. Instead, it whimpered and looked at me with sad brown eyes before running away. I turned my gaze to what the dog had been so interested in. My eyes went wide as they settled on the creature. It was small, maybe two feet tall, and covered with strange greenish skin. It had two arms and legs, like a person, but its face was bloated, and its two white eyes rolled around to look at me. It reminded me of a frog. I threw a look over my shoulder and gave my mom a reassuring wave. She had been calling me. She smiled and turned back to her conversation. I returned my attention to the strange creature as it was pulling itself off the ground to stand on its two webbed feet. I asked if it was okay, and to my amazement, it nodded. I noticed it was clutching something in its hand. It looked like a cluster of red ribbons. Strangely, they floated up from its grip to disappear into the air. I examined them, watching the way they fluttered in the summer breeze, trying to understand how they seemingly faded into nothing. It was like the creature was holding a bunch of invisible balloons and I could only see the strings. I pointed to the ribbons and asked what they were. In my mind, this creature was just another magical discovery on the path to adulthood. I had no idea that my situation wasn't normal. I didn't know that eerie frog creatures weren't part of the natural order of things. The tiny frogman looked towards where I was pointing, at his plume of ribbons, and then back at me. I could see intelligence behind its strange, puffy eyes. It opened its mouth and spoke. The clouds are hollow. Its voice was raspy and strained, like it was speaking in my language for the first time. I didn't know what it meant, what meaning the words held. And so I cocked my head and asked. It shook its handful of ribbons at me, their shiny red texture drifting from its grasp and fading into the gentle air. The clouds... Are hollow. It repeated, clearly stressing every syllable. I giggled, unsure what else to do. 
It raised a three-fingered hand and pointed to the distant horizon and the direction the ribbons were blowing. Clouds are coming. I was about to ask it another question, but my mom was calling me. I turned back to the frog creature and told it I had to go, but that it could come play with me if it wanted. It just stared at me, its eyes rolling over my face. It seemed like it was surprised I could see it. I waved a hand at it as I went back to my friends. I told them about my discovery, but when I pointed toward the tree line to show them my new pal, the creature was gone. Later that night, as I crawled into bed, listening to my parents talk from their bedroom, I heard something outside my window. It sounded like something was tapping the glass. I took a quick peek towards my door and then scuttled towards the window. I peered out into the darkness, looking for the source of the sound. Our house was only a single story, and so my view was filled with the backyard. A full moon glowed overhead, a golden badge on the dark fabric of night. And there was the strange frogman. His small two-foot frame was outlined by the moon's white rays, its hand clasping the strange red ribbons. They looked longer now, though, as they flapped in the silent air. Earlier, they had disappeared mere inches from its fist, but now they blustered in the wind, three feet in length. I quietly opened my window and called out to the creature softly. It approached me without hesitation, as if it had expected me. I asked it what it was doing here. Its voice slid from its green lips like wet silk. Stay by me. The hollow clouds are coming. I looked over my shoulder and saw the shadow of my parents' door close along the hallway wall. They were going to sleep. I pulled myself up onto the windowsill and over the other side. My bare feet crunched down on the dead grass. The frogman pointed to his ribbons, which were visibly growing, climbing up into the sky like empty leashes. The thing motioned me to follow it, and I did without question. It was just so strange and exciting, this bizarre friend I had made. It led me around the house and into the cul-de-sac of my neighborhood, where my house resided. I looked around at the other dark homes, hoping none of my neighbors saw me out here. I'd be in big trouble if they did. Something tugged at my hand, and I saw the frogman pointing towards the sky, urgently. Look! The empty clouds. Sure enough, overhead, massive black clouds rolled across the empty sky. They were tall, like thunderheads. But that's where the similarities stopped. The clouds had cracks and holes in them, like hard-boiled eggs, and a strange red light emitted from the insides. My eyes widened in the night as I gazed up into their interior. White, bony ribs filled the dark clouds lining the walls like gutless carcasses. Black ooze hung from the ebony formations of fractured cotton, and it reminded me of weeping willows. 
The silent masses chugged across the sky far above, looming over the neighborhood and blacking out the moon. Red light pulsed from the holes in the enclosed clouds, illuminating quick glances at the ribs inside. Drifting out of the bottom of the clouds were the red ribbons. I traced them down the sky, hundreds of feet, and saw that the strange creature was holding the other ends in his grip. Take my hand, the frogman urged. I quickly grasped its three-fingered hand, surprised at how warm it was. No sooner had I done so, than the clouds began to open up like gaping jaws. I saw the ribbons go taut in the creature's fist, and he adjusted his grip. His eyes trained in concentration at the evolving display. As the clouds opened, the ribs parted like teeth, and I felt the air swirl around me. My hair whipped up into my face, and I pushed it aside, my eyes wide and my heart racing in my chest. The clouds looked like dark, hungry mouths. Suddenly, floating out from the rooftops of my neighbors' houses were the glowing forms of people. I gasped as I recognized them, encased in a soft red glow, eyes closed, and gently drifting up to the waiting maw. I cried out, turning around, and saw the forms of my parents drift out of my house and up into the sky. They looked like they were asleep and completely unaware of what was happening. I tried to run to them, panic suddenly erupting in my chest. But the frogman held me tight. I begged him to let me go but he shook his bloated head violently. Not you. Not you, it kept saying, struggling to maintain its grip on both me and its strange nightmare balloons. I watched in horror as the people continued to rise up into the sky, higher and higher, until they finally entered the waiting jaws. One by one, the clouds closed, once again forming dark, broken spheres in the night. Every single person who had been pulled up from their home was now trapped, unaware, inside the rolling black thunderheads. Tears rolled down my face as fear churned my insides. In confused horror, I watched as the red ribbons slowly began to disappear again. They faded from the clouds into invisibility the closer they got to the frogman's fist. After what seemed like forever, the creature let me go, his other hand clutching only inches of ribbon now. Crying, I asked him what he had done to my friends, my family. I demanded it, taking a step towards it in defiance. The thing raised a hand at me, trying to settle my hysterics. It's okay. I took... only... It seemed to struggle to find the right words... I took their after dead. I cried harder, begging him to release all the people. It shook its small head at me, its mouth a thin green line. The hollow clouds need your people's after dead. If not... Its eyes filled with a quiet fear. If not, I lose control. 
and they will never go away. The ribbons will be broken, uncontrolled. The jaws will never stop eating. I didn't understand any of this at the time. I didn't know what he was talking about. I just knew I wanted to get away from the frogman and the strange, horrible nightmare balloons it held. Look. The frogman pointed to the sky. They're leaving. I trained my head up and saw the towering black clouds begin to fade. Their great ribbed walls slowly starting to drift higher and higher up into the air carried in the night towards the horizon. I looked back at the small creature next to me and saw it was still clutching the now tiny red ribbons. I wondered what would happen if he ever let them go. Goodbye, little one, the thing suddenly said. It took one last look at me, and then began walking across the street towards the woods. I didn't watch as it disappeared into the night, but instead turned and sprinted back to my house, convinced I would find my parents gone. As I crashed back through my window and tore down the hallway, I prayed I wasn't alone. I prayed harder than I ever had. I banged open my parents' bedroom door, and to my utter relief, I saw them both jump up in their bed, the noise jolting them from slumber. I climbed up with them, weeping, babbling about what I had just seen, about what I had just been through. They shushed me with loving compassion and told me I just had a bad dream. They told me they were here for me. It's been 20 years since that night. I haven't forgotten a single detail of the horrors I witnessed. But some of the terror has gained clarity since then. I have no rational explanation for what happened. I don't have any resolution to the fear that's held me for decades. But as the years have advanced... I've begun to wonder. I've begun to wonder what will happen to my parents when they die. I wonder where their souls will go. And even more terrifying, if the hollow clouds return. Will the little frogman remember my kindness? And save me a second time. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. <laughs> <laughs>